you are in trouble, oh Lord. Mali Kataya pressing it, Molly Galabasa Taya pressing it, Mahi Galabasa, Molly Kataya pressing it, Masa Taya Kalabasa, and Mosinda Libra, he can say, We come before you on the other side of the world. Feel my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no. Make me whole Feel my cup, Lord I lift it up, oh God Come and quench This thirsty of my
The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, he's there in the midst of them. We know you are here, oh Lord. Take your place. Arise, oh Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. I rebuke every sickness, disease, pain, and discomfort. And I speak into lives and circumstances this morning. A word from the Lord. Peter said, Oh God, we have toiled all night. We've toiled all night. We didn't catch anything. Now you are asking us. He says, We've toiled all night. I prayed about it yesterday. I cried about it last week. But at your word, I will cast my net. At his word this morning, receive from him. Receive from him right now. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give you praise, O oh God. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate the rain choir. Well, are you blessed? If we went home right now, we would say we were blessed. Amen? Uh, but we have uh, the last session on our paradigms this morning. But second service is not going to be normal. We, what you just had a glimpse or a taste of what's going to happen in the network service this morning. There's not going to be a sermon. There's, we're going to just stay in the presence of God. Amen? You can't, you know, we spend the whole month setting goals. But your goals without God are useless. So we want to realign everybody and say, this is an opportunity for everybody to sit down and say, where is God in all this? Amen? So that's what we're going to do in the network service. An opportunity for us to sit down and say, God, let's talk about these goals that I've done. Am I making sense? So this morning I've asked uh, Kunle to please come and share with you so we can have a different perspective on paradigms. Um, but we've started a membership class. It's taking place in the upper room. It's once a month, so we want to encourage those who just joined the church. It'll help you catch up with us. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not primarily a kindergarten teacher. I don't teach Jesus died on the cross and he rose three days. And he, You know what I mean? Not because it's not true. It's because I assume you know it. Amen? And so we have these classes where we want to show you, and then you can ask questions about why we do things the way we do it in this church, why we take coffee, why we sit down on chairs and tables as if they are uncomfortable but that's that's for another day so without much ado let me invite Kunle to come up let's appreciate him good morning good morning hallelujah amen um i think i was a pastor on monday and uh, this topic of uh, paradigm is something that is uh that is very close to my heart i wish people know the importance of paradigm the church should be full right now especially this month anytime god wants to change somebody he starts from the heart when god wanted to anoint was it uh saul king bob says as he turned the lord gave him what a new heart a new heart i'm talking about solomon now after Solomon had sacrificed and prayed and God gave him wisdom, and God gave him largeness of what? Of heart. Largeness of heart. Anytime God wants to touch somebody, he changes his heart. He touches his heart. And you see, paradigm is at what? It's a, something that happens in the heart level. And the beauty of it is that before I even knew the word paradigm exists, I had understood what paradigm is before I saw Kovi and I said, oh, this is the same thing they're talking about with another word. So I just wanted to say a word of prayer right now. That Lord, this morning, I want you to touch my heart. You see, I don't know whether you are tired of the level you are in now. No matter the level you are in, you could be tired of it. One of the easiest things to use to measure your life sometimes is finances. You know, it's, very, it's, a, it's a very good lead measure. You know, lead measure. You know what lead measure is, right? If you don't know lead measure, you should not be here. It's part of our courses here. Lead measures are things that are easy to measure. One of the easiest lead measures in life is money. That's why 
Robert Kiyosaki said when you are in school, they check your report card. But when you finish school, they check what? Your account statement. So if you are tired of the level you are in now, I want you to say God. Because see, the account statement doesn't change because he wants to change. He changes from here first. Say, Lord, touch my heart this morning. I'm tired of this level. I need to move to the next level. We have compassed this mountain for too long. It's time to go forward. We have compassed this mountain for too long. It's time to go forward. I've been anti transporting this Ibadan for too long now. It's not time to get your own car. I have compassed this mountain for too long. It's time to go forward. I've been paying rent for too long, Lord. It's time to move to my house. At any dimension that you are in now, I want you to speak to God because it starts from here. God touches here first and then things begin to change around. Lord, touch my heart this morning. Touch our heart this morning. Let there be a touch in our heart this morning. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, can I control this myself? Or you have to do it for me? I, I love it more when I'm doing it myself. Um, this concept of paradigm, to a large extent, even though this is a, a business seminar, there are some things you cannot teach at a seminar level. Sometimes you have to go really spiritual. So even though I'm going to be teaching a seminar this morning, and I've often observed from a lot of the top authorities, whether in the church or in the business dimension, as relates to paradigm, they still have to dovetail to the spiritual. Why? It's a change that happens at the spiritual level. You see, so even though it's a seminar this morning, I'm going to be, you know... <laughs> Now, I'm going to be starting with principles. You see, pastor started when we were doing our meeting that this throughout this year, we're going to be looking at principles. Principles. Now, I want to lay it first for us to understand what principle is. Because if you don't understand what principle is this morning, you might not understand what we're talking about here. Uh, please, can we see the screen properly? Can we see the screen? Can we see the screen? There is this guy called Ray Dalio. He wrote a book titled Principles. It's a very good book. If you like reading, which I expect you to do, please pick up the book. It's titled Principles. Now, Ray Dalio right now, I think the guy is worth how much? The screen is not so clear. I don't know why. It's what about? Is it 17 billion there about? Now, listen to me. If somebody is worth 17 billion, and let me say this, it was Ray Dalio that said that you cannot plan to become a billionaire. It's not planable. Now, if somebody is worth 17 billion, you better listen. It doesn't happen by accident. So, if, if Redalio is writing on principles, it's because principles are the secret to where he got to. Principles. And we all know that there are several principles in life. So, paradigm is actually a principle, but let's look at what he defines principles as. Principles are concepts that can be applied over and over again in similar circumstances. They can be applied over and over and over again. Every game has principles that successful players master to achieve results. So does life. So we can even say that life is a game. Life is a game. Have you noticed, especially in sports that are played by individuals, that when somebody becomes a champion, it becomes extremely difficult to beat him? Have you noticed? Check the guys that have been dominating lawn tennis for the past 10 years. It's the same guys. How come the younger guys cannot beat them? You know why? Principles. Principles. Principles are ways of successfully dealing with the loss of nature or the loss of life. Listen to me. Prayer does not answer everything. I think we've, we know that by now. Prayer is also like a principle. It has its own uses. Now, look at what he said here. He said, those who understand more of them and understand them well know how to interact with the world more effectively than those who know fewer of them or know them less. That means the more you understand the principles that govern this planet, the more you can interact with this planet and be successful. So we can say, Nigeria, for instance, 
does not understand the principle that governs this planet, which is why we cannot interact correctly with it. He said different principles apply to different aspects of life. Different principles apply to different aspects of life. There is a time to love a child. There is a time to spank the child. Both of them is love. You know that? It's both love. But applied differently. He said there are parenting principles for parenting. There's management principles for managing. Investment principles for investing. There's prayer principles for praying. For instance, Jesus Christ came, for instance, to reapply a prayer principle. He said, he said, don't pray that your enemies should die. Have you read it in the Bible before? He said, but now, pray that they succeed. Why? There are principles for prayer. Just because you are praying, guys, doesn't mean God is hearing. It's a mystery to me why believers think by noise, God hears automatically. No. Principles. Now, immediately you understand that, he allows you to settle down to know that energy is not equal to impact. Motion is not equal to progress. It has to be applied with the right principles to achieve the right result. Is it tired? So you want to see what Redalio said here. He said, treat life like what? Let me ask you, what is the first thing you learn in a game? The what? The rules of the game. You don't start a game by playing the game. You start a game by learning the rules. My challenge is that a lot of us live life by just living without learning the rules first. Because life is a game. And every successful player are those who understand the rules of the game and they apply to it. Even God, when he brought Jesus to the planet, he had to obey the rules. Guys, life is a game. Also, money is a game. Money is a game. In short, money does not exist. I'm sure you know that. Do you know money does not exist? It's a game. The day you know that money does not exist, you become financially free. It's just numbers that people are playing with. Life is a game. So, paradigm is the most important life principle. The day you discuss what I'm saying, it pains me that a lot of people who need to hear this, you know, they will come for, to church. And listen to me, please. I hope you understand that coming to church on Sunday is not a tradition. There's a purpose for this gathering here now. I said, listen, it's not because we must go to somewhere on Sunday. The reason we come to church is to come and learn the rules of life. That's it. The rules. So that we can go out there and then play effectively and succeed. That's the purpose of church. And paradigm is the most important principle in life. And let me prove it to you now. The day I can't forget, I was in my room in, in Melanby or UI. And we were listening to a tape by Les Brown. We didn't finish listening to that tape until about two, two uh, about three a.m. in the morning, in the midnight. And for the first time I saw this principle, I took a stroll to what's that place now? Is it the chapel that chapel ground? You know in school there is no midnight or afternoon, anytime you move around. Because I saw clearly that this is the most important principle if you understand it you understand everything and everything works and let me prove to you very fast please can i see my time oh, i can't see time here i'm seeing paradigm here <laughs> now if you have if you listen to pastor two weeks ago and anti aj last week you must have seen some of these definitions so let me just like for those of us who are here for the first time what does paradigm mean when they say paradigm what does it mean is the frame through which you see the world. Paradigm is a set of theories, assumptions, and ideas that contribute to your worldview. Paradigm is the way you look at something. Jesus Christ said, if you look at a woman lustfully, that means it's possible to look at her not lustfully. 
So that lust is the paradigm. Lust is a paradigm. Paradigm is your perception of you. Paradigm is the mental image of the, of the way things are to you. Your mental image of the way things are to you now. The reason why I normally put a lot of definitions like this is that all of us are different and we don't see things the same way. So at least one of these definitions must apply to you. And even Bible says, by the matter of two or three witnesses, they confirm every matter. So God will never say anything once. So paradigm is what? Are you guys with me at all? I hope you are here. Paradigm is what? It's how you see. That's all. Paradigm is how you see. How you see. How you see. How you see. So you don't see the world as it is. You see the world as what? As you. As you are. You don't see the world as it is. You see the world as you are. That means you determine everything. You are the focal point. Me. Now let me ask you. What do you use for seeing? When they say seeing, this seeing we are talking about. What do you use for seeing? Huh? Is it your eyes? Hello? What do you use for seeing? Huh? With your heart. Who has some other contrary answers? What do you use for seeing? When Jesus Christ said, if you look lustfully at a woman, you've already committed adultery with that woman. That look, what are you, what are you using to see? With what? Let's go back. I'm coming. Can, can I go back? He said, paradigm is the way what? You look at something. It's your perception of you. It's what? Mental. Where does mental image form? Your mind. So that means you don't see with your eyes. The scene we are talking about is not with what? It's not physical. It's like spiritual. So what do you use for seeing? As a man thinketh within himself, for what? Where do you use for thinking? Your mind. Or you can see your heart. So the, we are not talking of these eyes now, guys. These eyes is just like uh, like the floodlight of your car. It's not the one that sees. It's the eyes that it sees. For as he thinks in his soul, so is he. You can say so. He said, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Bible most of the time calls his heart. But in the business world, they say mind. Most of the time, they relate to the same thing. For as the man thinks in his heart, so he see. That thinking is the seeing. That thinking is the seeing. Now, if paradigm is how you see, which is your thinking, and how you think is who you are, then paradigm is who? That's you. So when I interact with you, I know who you are. I don't need to spend two hours with you. When I hear some things coming out of your mouth, I know who you are. So I can tell whether you are rich or poor. So paradigm is you. Paradigm is you. So when they are saying paradigm, it's not like an external thing. It's you. It's internal. You, 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 me. And to show you the importance of paradigm, which is you, see what Jesus Christ, uh, the Bible said here, said, above all else, above what? Guide your heart with what? All diligence. Why? It's you. Above all, above, when they say above all, what is above all, sir? Nothingness. Above all, above all, above all, guide your heart with everything you have. For out of it are the products you produce in life. Are you guys with me at all? Please, try and flow with me. Try and flow with me. He said, guide your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. This is your heart. This is your thinking. This is your mind. It's where everything in your life comes from. So who you are today is where? That guy. It's not Nigeria, 
It's not Ibadan. It's who? It's me. That's why I said, above all. Above all. That's why it surprises me when somebody sits down six hours watching Telemundo. When you're watching Telemundo, what are you doing? You open the gateway of your heart to who? To some funny people talking rubbish. To where? Your life, you. <laughs> they are programming you. He said, guide your heart more than everything else because the source of your life flows from it. Guide your heart above everything else. He said, evil communication corrupts what? See, listen to me. If you understand this principle, you'll be careful the people you spend time with. You'll be careful about your environment. Why? Everything is affecting you and that in your heart is the source of everything you get in life. That's why immediately saw Tom. Bible says God gave him a new heart. Why? That is who he is. Look at Jesus speaking here. Jesus speaking. He said, Therefore, consider carefully what? How you listen. Consider carefully how you listen. He said, pay attention how you hear. Pay attention, therefore, how you listen. Be careful, therefore, how you hear. Why? It's very important. It determines who you are. Because that's who you are. Consider carefully how you hear. Now, if Jesus Christ is laying emphasis like this, it tells you the importance of it. Now, this was what I discovered that day. Uh, like, I don't know. I don't write dates down. But I must have been to the other level. We were listening to Les Brown. He was doing a manpower conference. And he said, you don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. So listen to me. No matter how long I pray that I want something, if I don't become that thing, I don't get it. Haven't you noticed that a lizard in Nigeria does not become an elephant in America. Places don't make people. It's people that make places. You don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. That means the result in your life now is who you are. Hold on. So is, there's nobody to blame but who? You. You. You don't get in life what you want. That means what you want in life does not answer to prayer. The most richest guy in the world now, you know the most richest guy? If you don't know him, write it down. Anytime I'm doing my conference in Lagos, I said, when I say something, you don't know it, write it down. I'm going to Google it. Jeff Bezos is the most richest guy in the world. I know Jeff Bezos. If you don't know him, it's not good. Write it down. If you come for interview in my office, I'm interviewing you and I mentioned Jeff Bezos by mistake and you don't know it, you have gone. I just sent you out. How can you not know Jeff Bezos? You are illiterate. Jeff Bezos now is what? $105 billion. The reason he's the, most, he's the most, most richest guy is that nobody has ever been worth $105 billion ever in life. At least since they started counting money. But Solomon, is, they say he's still the richest. So, but, but then they don't count money. But then they've counted counting money. Now, what am I saying? If you go and leave Jeff Bezos, he didn't become that by playing. He became that by changing who? This guy. That's why, since Nigeria has been playing, you will notice, are things going up? Where are things going? You see, listen to me, listen, listen. Some of us are very fitty. It's good. You see it? But sometimes when you are talking business, you talk realistically. These are the figures we are getting now. Our sales are going down. So these are the things we need to do to improve the sales. So there's something wrong in the sales are going down because it's going down. You are getting me? For Nigeria to change, Nigerians must change. But listen to me. Since you cannot wait for the old Nigerians to change, you must what? You must change because you don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. You 
will get to level you are. Now, let's continue now. Look at what Timulon said here. He said, sometimes it's something you attract by who? By the person you become. Guys, let me tell you how crazy this thing is. Let me tell you how crazy. It's crazy. I do a lot of seminars in Lagos. A lot of seminars. People, I do radio adverts. People will register. Do you know something? Any day I'll be the one to do the seminar. More people come. If I say one of my staff will do it, I won't be in the office. We notice the attendance will drop. Now, it's not as if they said, it's Mike that will do the seminar, so come. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm there, more people come. There is something you become that naturally attracts good things. Yesterday, and they were coming from, from, from Lagos, and there was one, the craziest old dog at the toll gate. And this thing happens to me constantly. It's a, it's a natural occurrence. So I told him, if we face this place, they have, well, let's go and turn and follow a route people are not following. Naturally, I would have gotten here maybe like 8 or 9 yesterday night. We followed the route. The BAT guys were blocking the road. You know BAT? British American Tobacco. That company there. They were blocking the road. They weren't anybody to pass. As I got there, not to one minute, more people came. They said, Bopo must pass. Bopo must pass. They had to open the what? As they opened, all of us did what? Pass. I said, I told the G. I said, you don't understand. I've been going on this road for about five years now. I've never had one issue. My tire was always point up. Never organized that. Even at one, he left. There was a time I left for Takot. I didn't tell my wife. I wanted to surprise her. So I left for Takot. I got to Ibadan in Lagos, maybe around 9 o'clock. They delayed the flight. I left my office maybe around to 10. My wife doesn't know. When I got to my car, tire was down. I told the security guys, change the tire. So I didn't have spare. He said, coming to Ibadan. <laughs> when I passed with him, come, bam, the tire went down. Boom. Exactly near organizer. In the midnight, every time I'm going on that road, for how many years? Five years. You don't, success sometimes is something you attract by the person you become. If you are always having bad luck, prayer doesn't solve it all. You have to change this guy. Look at this, what this guy said. This is, uh, what's his name now? Redalio again. Redalio. I was telling my, my staff yesterday, I said, the next economic forum, I, I would like to be there. You know economic forum, right? If you don't know it, write it down. <laughs> In Davos, Switzerland. I said, I'd like to be there. But because people that are there are not normal people. They are CEOs of the top companies in the world. That's small. I'd like to be there. They tell you, this was an economic forum some years ago. He said, by and large, life gives you what, what? You deserve. It doesn't give you what you like. You have been liking new cars since. It's not coming. It doesn't come by liking it. So it's up to you to take full responsibility to connect what you want to need. Now, listen to me. To show you, these are things, these are research I did when I was in UI. It's not as if because I want to come and teach you now. I did this research. No, no, no. It was in my thinking of the fact that you don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. God took me to allotrophs. Allotrophs of carbon. You know, if you didn't do chemistry, you know what allotrophs is. Allotrophs are substances that have the same content, but because they have different forms, they appear differently. It's called allotrophs. All allotrophs, the variant of substance, consistent of, or, uh, consist of only one form or at, of atom. What happened? Nepa, does life go? Please, are you with me? Try and stay with me, please. An allotrope is a variant of a substance consisting of only one atom. It is a new molecular configuration or paradigm. A new molecular configuration or paradigm of the same substance with new physical what properties you will see it now <laughs> the same content but different what configuration 
and then the properties change. That means the same you that you are living in face me and face you can build a house in the most expensive part of Ibadan. Why? The configuration changes. Now, if you look at, if you look at, now, if you want to write those definitions, now it's important. It has the same content, but different configuration. And immediately, a lot of came to my brain. The Lord took me to diamond and graphite. Remember, the invisible things of God from the foundation of the head are what? Are understood by what? The things that are seen. That means there is no spiritual principle you cannot understand with the physical experience. There is no spiritual principle you cannot explain with the physical substance. Why? From the foundation of the earth, every invisible things of God are understood by the things that are seen, so that men are without excuse. So diamond and graphite. Diamond and graphite contain the same thing, carbon. Everybody comes to church, we all get the same content. But we go out there and get different results. Why? The arrangement of the content in us is different. And it's the arrangement that is most important. Content, content. Look at the price of graphite here. If you go to AliExpress, uh, Alibaba, if you don't know Alibaba, write it down. Alibaba.com. That's the company that is owned by Jack Ma. If you don't know Jack Ma, write it down. Very important. See, ah, this is not very clear. <laughs> it's $2.6 for a kilogram of graphite. Two point what? $2.6, about a thousand naira. For a kilogram of what? Of graphite. Look at the price of diamond. Diamond, this small diamond, is $33,000. The same content, different configuration. See the price difference. See, if you want to increase how much you are earning, all you need to do is to change this guy. I'm telling you. The same you but different configuration. Now listen to me. That this thing is very deep. Sometimes you don't know how it happens. Even diamond does not know where it is formed. It just goes through a process and becomes diamond. Please, are you with me at all? This is as real as it gets. Listen, I don't deceive myself. Oh. The results I'm getting is who I am. If I want to get a better result, I need to change. Listen to me. I understand there is nothing in a new car. Is that it in the new car? People say there's nothing in it. Great. But I always tell myself, the people driving it, they don't have two heads now. Ah, why are you okay? Now, some people, if you want to start looking, if you, if you want to buy a car, now, some say, I'm looking for a 2007 car. I'm like, ah, 2007, that's 10 years ago. How many years? There's a 2018 car now. Why are you not thinking that way? <laughs> Guys, you must maximize your stay on this planet. And you can't maximize it except you change who you are. And listen to me. God cannot even help you. All the, what God needs to help you is what you are hearing now. But you must put in the effort to change who you are. Look at what Jesus said here. Jesus was talking here. He said, Thus, by their fruits, you will do what? You know them. So I know you by your performance. I know you with what I'm saying. By their fruits, you will know them. Don't deceive yourself. By your fruits is who you are. By your fruits is who you are. By your fruits is who you are. Don't deceive yourself. Stop giving excuses for your failures. Your results right now is who you are. By their fruits, you will know them. Say so, you will know them by what they produce. (laughs) 
if everybody becomes as hard on themselves as they need to be your results will change you need to be hard on yourself i think it was les brown that said if you are hard on yourself life becomes easier on you if you are hard on yourself life becomes easy on you you are too easy on yourself that's why life is hard <laughs> if you want life to be easy become hard <laughs> now if you read this book retire young retire rich by who Robert Kiyosaki retire young listen to me when I discovered when I was in UI by the three other level I discovered I could not make uh, Two one or first class anymore, it was too late. You know, prayer does not move grades by 300 level. It was a five year course, even if I make seven points throughout, I knew two two. So I started investing in business books so that if this my BSc mechanical engineering does not work, then my personal BSc in past capacity development, personal development will work. And guess what? My BSc in engineering, I've not practiced for one hour since I finished, it didn't work. It was my BSc in Robert Kiyosaki, in Zig Ziglar, in uh, Tony Robbins. This is the BSc that worked. <laughs> See what Robert Kiyosaki said here. He said, content is like water. You put water into a cup, it becomes what? The cup, you see now. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put water in a teacup, it becomes a teacup. Context is the shape of the container. So you can determine your own shape, guys. You. <laughs> Whatever shape you are is what determines what you hear produces. Do you know what the Bible said? You know, when you read the Bible, read it, read it. But I said, uh, I think it was Solomon. He said, wisdom. In the heart of a king is like deep water he said a man of understanding will draw it out that means he takes understanding to draw wisdom from the heart of a king that means you must understand to a level to understand to another level to understand to another level that's why he said deep cause it to deep is who you are that even determines the value of what you are getting now Look at what this guy said, Gary. You know Gary. If you don't know Gary, it's also not good. He's also one of the pastors. Good guys here. If you don't know Gary, it's not good. Write that name down. Google it. He's a great, he's a great guy. He said, if context is king, context is what? It's God. If content is king, context is God. More important. I'm not sure this guy is a believer. <laughs> you are seeing now. That's an unbeliever talking. He said, context is God. See, Dr. Kiyosaki said, Dr. Kiyosaki, he said, so, so we are in the old economy, context was king. He said, in the new economy, context is what? It's king. It's no longer about content, guys. It's majorly about context now. Context. The arrangement of what you are seeing inside you is what most, most, what's most important. So, can context be changed? Can your paradigm be changed? So, now this is the most important thing. Can I change this guy to begin to produce a different fruit? And this is the most important part now. Can I change my paradigm? Can I change my paradigm? Can I change my paradigm? Let's look at the process for changing paradigm very fast. And I'm, I'm out of here. Please, are we okay? Are you here? Please, this thing I'm talking about is very critical. Extremely critical. See what Jesus said here. He said, make a tree good and what? Its fruit automatically become good. That means you don't know a tree by the tree. You know it by the fruit. Or make a tree bad and its fruit become bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. For a tree. That's why when the president of America said something about Africa. I'm like, why are they angry? Is he lying? 
by their fruits by their fruits you know them either make a tree good and its fruit good or else make it corrupt and its fruit corrupt for a tree is known by its fruit now listen to me anytime you hear the word make make in the bible it's not the same thing as create there are two different things in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth after he created he started making and anything that is made can be remade but anything that is created stays like that there are two different things so immediately just christ said make i knew a tree can be changed because it's a process make follow me and i'll do what i will make you fishers of men making is possible it's a process this one is quite long i love the story when you read the story it challenges your brain jesus christ had been doing miracles doing miracles doing miracles and one time they entered he entered the boat with his disciples and he said guys be careful about the yeast of the pharisees ah he said look at this man oh. we are forgotten bread ah we didn't carry bread jesus christ was so pissed he said ah how can you be worrying about bread you forgot yesterday i converted that many loaves to what i converted the fish to what when i'm talking of yeast i'm not talking of bread he said then they understood that he was not talking about sorry then you understood what he was telling them to guard against what the yeast of sorry not the yeast in bread but against the teaching of the pharisees that means teaching is a process of making listen to me christ would have gone bam and said peter you are an apostle sorry sir you are not an apostle automatically in one second Abi. why did it take three years to change them it's a process he was changing that configuration listen to me in act of the apostle bible says when they saw the boldness of peter and the disciples said they took note of them that they are being with jesus there was a making process something has changed somebody who used to go and hide became bold i say i say this all the time people don't understand a father is an atm your children you've given them a card and password anytime your children come and they say bam bah, 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 and you're only saying unable to dispense cards you are not a good father peter that used to say unable to dispense cards money uh, inter-switch inoperative all of a sudden when they put card money was ah is this not the same peter then they took note of him he had been with jesus that was a making process he has changed that means your paradigm can change but it's a process look at the scripture look at the scripture and the lord said unto moses write this for a memorial uh, memorial in the book and rehearse it in who in the here now if you are the acid, you the ask once. Rias, 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 Rias. You must hear it and hear it and hear it. Every time you hear it, it's knocking some things back into place. It's knocking the things back into place. Things that have been wrongly arranged. It's rearranging them. Listen to me. You can't be changed by coming to church only on Sundays. Sir. Some of you only hear something on Sunday. You can't change his disciples were living with him and eating with him so it must be every day every day when i was in ui listen to me when i was in ui when i discovered this principle then there was no cd player we used to have cassette i had this cassette it's one battery and the battery can last and we don't normally use the cassette to rewind we use bible guys ah, i had i had Everywhere you see me, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. You know, if not now that I'm beginning to get myself, there's a time that when I preach, you said you go to winners. Oh, you are, you, you talk like oh, you, you know why? 
I had over listening. Listen to me. I spent I spent less than hundred thousand on my wedding. You don't know. Anytime pastor is saying, don't waste money. You see the church members, they waste money on wedding. You know why? They are not hearing. Because you cannot hear on Sunday. The reason why you will be configured to do the things you are hearing is that you have had it. You can't hear on Sunday. You will get the tape. You will play the tape till the tape cuts. You don't use a tape to gum it. Ah, you don't know those days of tape. Ah. Rehearse it. Rehearse it. Rehearse it. Rehearse it. That's how to change you. To the Jews that believed on him, what did Jesus Christ say? If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will do what? And the truth will set. Look at that word set. It means it's resetting. The configuration is being what? It's being reset. Listen to me. Even you, you don't know how. You just wake up one day and you notice things are changing. You, ah, this man change. You don't know when it's going to change. But you just know that gradually things are beginning to fall in place. Let me tell you what I used to do. And it's a very critical formula. It's, it's a formula I just discovered. When I was reading the Bible, you know, those days, anytime we go on strike, we used to have a lot of strike. And because I was privileged, which is why. Anytime you are given a responsibility, take it with 100% hands. You don't know the value of that responsibility to you. I was a pastor on campus for like four years. And any, because you have to teach, you must lead. And I don't like reading to teach. I like teaching from here. So I must have it before I teach it. Because if I just teach it, I waste time. So anytime we go on strike, people will go home. I stay on campus. There's some scriptures. If I bring them out for you, you won't believe it. Why? They are inside. I'm not reading them. If I tell you this slide, you are seeing. I do open Bible throughout. <laughs> Why? I have it. I will take a topic like faith. Please, let me tell you how to change. Take a topic like faith. Faith. You want to understand faith? Get every authority on the topic of faith not just bible hello not just bible get every authority in that topic and say for the next six months i'll be studying faith everywhere you are be reciting riaza 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 when you feel okay in your spirit that you know faith say now i want to understand success not just read one book you go and buy all the books of success you will buy the singular you, you buy Jim Rohn, Jehebra, everybody on success and begin to read and read. What are you doing? You are making. This thing works at the deep spiritual level. See what he said here. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you shall do what? Meditate on it day and night. Day and night, day and night, that you might observe to do according to what's missing there. Then will you do what? That word make, make, make. You can see there. Make, make your way prosperous. I love what this one said. This other version here. He said, Then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. Then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. Please, there are a lot of young people here. It's good sometimes if you change young. It's harder to change when you are old. The software is still soft. Some of us, we are too old. The it has become hardware. <laughs> but it's not impossible. But I'm letting you know if you are young, yeah, please. On, listen to me. You see, when, when we were, I think I was in, still in primary school, my dad lost his job. Not just lost his job because I was like a crime committed. Thieves came to steal some things in the company. It's time, sir. So he lost his job, and we, we used to take AC to the office. My dad's car, then new car, AC, everything. 
overnight decided to take transport. And everything went from up there to where? To zero. There was a time that for two years we didn't eat rice. We were eating two o, they call it two o corn. You know, corn is cheaper. So we make two o with a wedu. You know, for a long time, that's the, that the best food. You see? So I understand what it means to be on zero, to be on total lack. And I made up my mind. I'm not going to allow my children to go through such at all. My greatest fear is that will I be able to give these kids the best? That's my greatest fear. Will I be able to give my wife the best? I think that was this uh, Mr. What's his name now? He preached here what I said. Marriage, when you say I love you, it means I'm going to work. <laughs> Did you hear it that day? <laughs> Guys, you have to make up your mind that in the next 10 years I want to be here and these are the things you have to do. And it's not just Bible. Every proper authority on a topic, get their material. Shut yourself in and begin to remake yourself. I'm telling you. And begin to remake. Because some of us, we keep carrying this course over. You keep carrying the course over and you can't pass the next course without it. See what this man said here. Kiyosaki. He said, before you can transform your wallet from poor to rich, you have to what? Listen to me. Is this guy a Christian? I don't know. Sir, is he a Christian? <laughs> your what? Your spirit is to show you that this change you're talking about, even as it concerns your wallet, is at the spirit level. Guys, there is no shortcut to this at all. There is no shortcut to this at all. Any area of your life, you need a change. Get relevant materials. Shut yourself in. Shut yourself in. Shut yourself in. Bible said, true desire. A man, having separated himself, secret and intermediate with all wisdom. A man, having done what? You need to separate yourself sometimes. If you have TV in your house, you need to throw it away sometimes. If the TV is a problem, throw it away. And focus that day and night, day and night, you are changing. Because it can't happen in church. I'm sorry. Unless you take the message of the church and hear it, hear it, hear it. But if you just hear it once here, it's, it's not useful. Now listen to me. Do you know, for instance, sir, because I was going to take this message, I started doing research on paradigm again. If you know the content of material, I want to sit down to eat now on paradigm. Why? Guys, this year I want to move to billion. You get me? I want my account balance to enter billion. So I also need to now move this guy to where? To billion. <laughs> The billion and guess what it's extremely achievable there is so much opportunity now on this planet especially online that if you align yourself properly a billion is easy let me give you a story seven years ago seven years ago if you invested one hundred dollars in bitcoin you know bitcoin if you don't know bitcoin it's not good write it down it's a crime if I know you here, you don't know Bitcoin, I can tell police to lock you up in Agodi for like three days. I'm telling you, that's how bad it is. If you bought Bitcoin of $100 seven years ago, today, that Bitcoin is worth over $300 million. Seven years ago. Please, how much is $300 million? Try and convert it to Naira. Now, listen to me. How come you didn't buy it by mistake? You know why? For you to buy it, you must be something. Your spirit will not see it unless you are something. Do you know, even between last year and now, there are some currencies, just like Bitcoin, but there are a lot of them now, that did a million percent return on investment, which means if you had put $10 January last year, by now, you should have at least $100,000.
with how much investment? Ten dollars. To become a billionaire has become easy. It becomes easy. Guys, please, if you are sleeping, it's time to wake up. And when I say wake up, I don't mean wake up physically. There are a lot of spiritual sleeping. Do you know why I don't beg? Begging is a spirit. People don't know. I can never beg. I will trek. I have trekked some things you can never believe. People don't, people don't understand trekking. I grew up in the north. We can trek. Why? I will, there was a time, listen to me. When I finished secondary school, between secondary school and university, I started going to Living Faith Church. Then we we're going to CNS. My parents are going to CNS. Celestial Church. You know White Garment now. I, I was there for like five years. So I can see vision very well. <laughs> what doing, sir? What doing? That's why when they bring people that see vision, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with vision. There's so much too much vision in CNS. So I'm not impressed. Now listen. I said go to Living Faith Church. And then they told us that when you come to see God, you must not come empty. You must come with an offering. And I was not working. You won't believe it. Because I have made up my mind, I won't collect transport for my father. Even when I do have money, I will trek to church. Trek to and fro. Trek from here to Bodija and come back. Just to go and hear what for two hours. To go and hear what for two hours. Twice a week on Sunday, we go to CNS. But every midweek service, I go, I go and hear the word. I go and hear the word. I go and hear the word. I'll be trekking. Then it occurred to me, why don't you start doing business? Then I started doing Zobo. We package Zobo. And when I sell my Zobo, I have money for transport, I have money for offering. Everything I do in business today started from there. From that trekking, anytime you are begging, you are killing creativity. You don't know that begging is a spirit. Jesus Christ never begged. Haven't you noticed? <laughs> Listen, if you are configured properly, your spirit cannot beg. <laughs> it can't. When I was my final year, about my mom used to because my mom was in America then, she used to give me hundred dollars every month. Hundred dollars that was about 15k then, hundred dollars a month. By my final year, and I started doing business on campus, I told my mom, stop sending the money. <laughs> now I am doing business on campus. I can take care of myself and still save. Do you know I was in my final year when I bought Nigerian beauty shares of half a million naira? I was still in school. When I talk to people now about registering companies, how can you be above 18? You don't have a registered company. Is it okay? You are above 18. You don't have a business name registered. Not talk of a graduate. You know, people can say, I am savvy. What does it mean? Service is equal to money. You don't know NYC. Being a student is equal to money. You don't know. Student is equal to what? Money. When I was on campus, I was making at least 25K every month. As a student. Why? It was from here. After it, I have listened, listened, listened. Then the thing became to come out. So please, I want to challenge you. This thing does not come by prayer. It comes by work. Because it takes work to listen. It takes work to hear. It takes work to sit down. And begin to get yourself changed. Change, change. You will, you will not even know when it happened. Overnight, you just notice that things are what? Change. Let me show you something. My wife was a year ahead of me in school. She was a year ahead of me. Even though I'm older than she is. I was in 400 level. I think it was in 500 or something. Do you know why I married somebody who was ahead of me? All the other ones were below. They are, too, they are thinking it's not mature. I can't be thinking of next 10 years. You are saying, let's buy ice cream. I want to take ice cream. Are you following with me? What am I saying? You must work on yourself to a level you are not operating at the level of your colleague anymore. I will get to the service when I was in school. I will say, I'm just coming from Texas now. You know why? I just finished to six to, to TDJX. Now, if I just listen to TDJX, where was I coming from? Texas. 
I said, I'm just coming from Texas now. Wow, great service in Texas. Why? TDJ just entered my ear. <laughs> Guys, these things don't happen by accident. No result happens by accident. Everything you see around the person happens because something is working at the background. So if you are sleeping, please wake up. Please, have I blessed anybody here this morning? Have you learned anything? Thank you very much. God bless you. Well, I suggest you get the tip. I suggest you listen again. The, t- the media unit will be happy to give you the slides free of charge. I'm going to take your tithes and offering because I let him take his time this morning because we needed to hear that. Amen? Are you here? Bring out your tithes. Bring out your offering. Use it to release your faith today for your heart to be made through the word of God. I'll tell you a story. I'd heard it before, but for whatever reason, I heard it again this morning. This pastor decided to go and visit a farmer. When he arrived at the farm, he saw acres and acres of very well organized farm. Beautiful. It was picturesque, they call it. It was like it was photoshopped, but it wasn't. It was real. Beautiful farm. Harvest in rows. I remember what Mesa be said. African farms don't have straight lines, but that's for another day. But everything was in rows, beautiful and everything. So as he was walking about the farm, he said, my God, my God, this man is blessed. So he finally met the, the <laughs> he met the farmer. I said, Mr. Farmer, good morning. I said, how are you? Said, nice. Thank you for visiting pastors. I said, can I help you? He says, well, before we talk about what I came for, I want to say you are blessed having a farm like this. Hmm. The farmer said, yes, so. He says, every day, I thank God for the farm. I'm grateful to God. But if you want to see the state the farm was 10 years ago when God gave it to me, <laughs> you will see the difference between the farm under my watch and the farm before God gave it to us. Remember what T.D. Jake said? God doesn't make chairs. He makes trees. The process is what we have all been running away from. If I said this morning, Kunle was going to lay his hands for the next generation of billionaires that are coming out of TBN in 2018, we would have had wall-to-wall people in church waiting for hands to be laid upon them. When we say, come, let's teach. Check the Bible. Jesus taught more than he preached. He went about the synagogues teaching. Even when he went to a place and he could dare do no mighty work, the next verse will say to you, and he began to teach. To teach. You are as successful as the size of your library. How many books do you have? I didn't say read. I said, how many books do you have? I have an 80-page brochure. Every time I give it to this generation, they say, it's too much. I can't read it. I said, good. I wrote it. You can read it. Okay generational bow your heads bring out your tights challenge yourself this is the list you will give this year, this month starting in February you are starting on another level every day it was a song we sang this morning, the choir began but what was the first song you sang this morning I, I've forgotten the name of the song. What was the first song you sang this morning? Yeah, breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, <laughs> spirit of God. 
what I want you to do. Surrender. As I live my hands in surrender to your from this word 
many will bring forth 30 fold many will bring forth 60 and many will bring forth a hundred fold in the mighty name of Jesus thank you father let's appreciate pastor Kunle let's appreciate it really praise the Lord um, if you, are you coming here for the first time can we see your hands we want to greet you say hello to you bless you we're already 30 minutes behind schedule so we're going to take a 15 minute coffee break and then the choir is going to come up we're going to adjust the service a little bit a bit short um, worship then we're going to go straight to pray for the nation positively this morning I've asked them to show the interview of the pre vice president at Davos there's too much bad news about this country when there's good news in this country amen we need to focus amen on some of the good things that are happening amen and then we're going to move into what God wants us to do this morning are you blessed are you blessed let's appreciate pastor Kunle one more time next month we're moving to principles then March we're going to start applying the seven habits and more to specialized area real estate investments you know buying property you know what I mean how we're going to do that we have, we're going to have a lot of variety of speakers who are specialists in their own field amen God bless you have a wonderful coffee break alright if you can 15 minutes